Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to our, our channel. channel. Have you ever wondered how we pay our bride price here in Zimbabwe? Well, this is the video for you. Stay tuned. In modern day Zimbabwe, some Zimbabweans are choosing to have two weddings. A white wedding as per Western customs, which is preceded by a traditional marriage ceremony called Maroro or Rora. Today we're taking you along for two roras. One was my brother's and the other was my cousin's. So let's get right into it. The two largest ethnic groups in Zimbabwe are the Shona people and the Ndabele people. Cultural practices differ between these two groups. This includes the way they conduct their marriage ceremonies. However, despite the variation in their practices, the payment of bride price is expected in both cultures. We're here at Kali's Rora in Dema, Zimbabwe. Kali is Tony's cousin and she's invited us, along with our closest family members, to be a part of this event. We're at a dowry ceremony. It's called Rora Olobola in our native Zimbabwe native language. So this is where it's like the first step of getting married. We basically they bring gifts, they bring money and we give um, our daughter away. Now, if you're a foreigner witnessing a Lobola ceremony for the first time, one of the questions that will pop up in your mind almost immediately is, why are the men sitting in chairs while the women are sitting on the floor? And no, it's not because they're short on furniture. So then why? Well, we really don't have an answer for you, except that that's the tradition. But if you're Zimbabwean and you do have an answer, please comment below. <laughs> we're collecting money, we're collecting groceries, we're collecting cows. So what's the significance of Rora? Because some people um, believe that it's like buying the woman or you're paying for the woman. A lot of people in Jamaica or even any country in the West have that idea. What okay, would you it's say? Not really, it's not really buying. It's really a sign of appreciation to the family that uh, you raised up a wife well for, for, for me. So this is a sign... Um, uh, like a token of appreciation really so it's a it, it dates so if it's a token back. why do we see them bargaining who bargains about a token aren't you supposed to just receive a gift of appreciation no some, some, sometimes comment in the in uh, comment in the comments below guys let us know what you think about dowry and lobola whether or not it's really an appreciation or they're <laughs> it's paying a, it's, it's really not a money making gimmick they're just saying uh, she can't go on the chip because she's so valuable to us. She's precious to us. So, so they're paying. They are appreciating. They're buying. They're not buying. They're appreciating. <laughs> the practice of paying dowry might be difficult for those from Western societies to understand, but it's not unique to African cultures. Dowry is practiced with different variations in the Middle East and South Asia. Contrary to what some foreigners and a growing number of locals think, it's not a business transaction, but a ceremony to show appreciation to the bride's family. So the groom sends a delegation that will negotiate on his behalf. The bulk of the money is shared between the father and the mother with small tokens given to those who may have helped raise the brides to be like the uncles and the aunts. Yeah, 
Another important part of this process is when the Mukwasha presents groceries to the bride to be's family. The Makwasha's delegation presents the groceries to the aunts of the bride-to-be, who in Shona culture are called Vanamainini. If the family is satisfied by what is presented, then they show appreciation and the proceedings continue. Back at Tari's Rora, the same thing is about to happen. <laughs> At this Rora, Tony's brother is the Mukwasha, so Tony is on the other side of the fence this time. And as you can see, the process is the same, whether you're in Harare or in Dema. <laughs> the most exciting yet emotional part of Rora is the dancing and the singing. When the family starts celebrating, you can feel the love, you feel the joy, you feel the absolute excitement and the beauty of two families coming together as one. Back at Callistus's Rora, the proceedings are almost complete. According to Shauna tradition, in a few moments from now, she'll become someone's wife. Okay, so culturally, the Wakashas are supposed to have their own separate room. Mm -hmm. And in our culture, they don't have to be mixed. The Indos and the Tejanas in the Wakashas, they're not supposed to get mixed. So we create a room for the in those the new coming in those sensations. We give them a room where they feel free to interact, to discuss their issues as they go and pay them a ball at the room. That's why they're in the same state. Wow. Wow.
The Lobola process is complete. The two families are now one. Kali is now a bride. She's overcome with tears of joy and happiness. Her friends, her aunts, her siblings, and her new mother all embrace her as they celebrate this grand occasion. Thanks for watching yet another episode, guys. Please do share, like, and subscribe if you haven't. Let us know what you think about Rora slash Bride Prize in the comment section below.